Nothing has changed our lives more than the digital revolution. In the first decade of the 21st century, the number of people worldwide that were connected to the internet increased from 350 million to more than 2 billion. At the same time, the number of mobile phone subscribers rose from 750 million to over 5 billion. If the current growing pace of digital innovation is maintained, it has been predicted that by the year 2025, the majority of the world's population will have access to all of the world's information through a device that fits in the palm of their hand. This increase is part in due to marketing and brand analysis. In today's society, branding has become a cultural infrastructure in the media, social context, experience, community, and the product itself all work together in building a brand. It may be one of these qualities that entice a consumer to enter and take their place into this business-to-consumer-driven market. However, there has been a recent trend where instead of consumers being influenced by brands, it is in fact the brands which are increasingly being controlled and shaped by consumers. The primary drivers of this trend are the changes in how people live their lives in this new digital age. This book talks about the fundamentals of global connectivity and the expansion of the virtual world. It argues that connectivity on an unimaginable scale is approaching and that the vast majority of all humankind will be beneficiaries of it. This course of practical business skills examines the rhetorical strategies and situations of marketing campaigns and the growing digital culture in today's markets. These two concepts of global connectivity and the digital market intertwined with each other create a framework for designers and entrepreneurs to innovate and build upon. Since stepping aside in early 2011 as the CEO of Google, Eric Schmidt and Jared Cohen, the director of Google Ideas, have been traveling the world, researching and talking to people to write their book, The New Digital Age. The New Digital Age attempts to outline the shape of the world that will develop as a result of the technological revolution that is seeping into every corner of the globe and every part of people's lives. It is about how humans interact with, implement, adapt to, and exploit technologies in their environment and in the future. And it's about guiding the human hand in the New Digital Age. This book has seven chapters and each chapter title begins with the future of, which are our future selves, the future of identity, citizenship and reporting, the future of states, the future of revolution, the future of terrorism, the future of conflict, combat and intervention, and finally the future of reconstruction. In chapter one, the future selves, it talks about how there are five billion more people set to join the world of connectivity how the boom in the digital era will bring gains in health, education, productivity, and quality of life, and many other areas in the physical world. And this will be true for everyone, from the elite users to those at the base of the economic pyramid. But being connected in the virtual world will mean different things to different people, mainly due to the problems they need to solve. In Chapter 2, The Future of Identity, Citizenship and Reporting, it states that the world's virtual population will outnumber the physical population of the entire Earth over the next decade. Yet despite these advances, it would strip citizens of much of their control over their personal information in the digital space, and this may have significant consequences in the physical world. We learn that both the physical and virtual worlds are not mutually exclusive, and what happens in one will have consequences in the other. Global connectivity is arriving at a much faster pace than we first anticipated, and many old institutions will have to adapt or have the risk of becoming obsolete. In Chapter 3, The Future of States, the Internet has been described as a lawless space, ungoverned and ungovernable by design. It is constantly mutating, and government efforts to control it are futile. But governments have power over the mechanics of the Internet in their own countries by ways of transmission towers, routers, switches, and entry and exit waypoints. 
Because of this, they can limit the content and hardware that people are allowed to use. In chapters 4, 5, and 6, The Future of Revolution, Terrorism, and Conflict, respectively, it discusses how communication technologies will enable new connections and allow certain tactical efforts such as mobilizing crowds or spreading information. It discusses how we will all be vulnerable not only to physical terrorism but also cyber terrorism. And lastly, how much more we are aware of the conflicts around the world and how conflict will always find its roots in the physical world. Finally, in Chapter 7, The Future of Reconstruction, it builds on how technology cannot prevent a civil war or a disaster, but it can make the process of rebuilding broken pieces less painful. For example, after the 2010 earthquake in Haiti, the primary task was the restoration of badly damaged telecommunications. Within 10 days of the earthquake, the two largest mobile phone operators in Haiti reported at 70 to 80 percent capacity. Fast networks aren't secondary, they're complementary to the reconstruction of a society. In conclusion, it is evident that humans and computers will be working more closely together in the future, as this can already be seen today. Physical and virtual worlds coexist and complement each other and this will greatly affect the behavior of citizens in the coming decades. Duties will be divided according to what each entity, humans or computers, does well. We will use human intelligence for intuition, human interactions and judgment, and we will use computing power for its infinitely fast processing and memory. Both worlds, the physical and the virtual, will shape and guide each other and will form a more transparent, interesting, and hopefully a more egalitarian world.